You're listening to the Laura London Fitness Show with your host, Laura London. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Laura London Fitness Show. Today, I have a very, very special guest. Her name is Heather Von St. James, and we are talking about mesothelioma and her story and why it is so important to share with everyone. So hi, Heather. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. This is such an honor. You're an amazing person, and being on your show is really cool. <laughs> well, I'm so happy you reached out to me, and that's why I love you know, Facebook and social media, because you, you meet the most amazing people, and now here we are on this interview. Yeah. So you reached out to me because this is a we have a special awareness day coming up. So why don't you share, you know, first of all, your story with everyone because it's so important. Okay. Um, well, what's coming up is a day called Mesothelioma Awareness Day on September 26th, and that's what this big push is about. And I'm trying to get a bunch of social media people on board to bring awareness to the day because I was diagnosed with mesothelioma almost 11 years ago um, and people are like wait a minute mesothelioma isn't that that cancer I see TV commercials for late at night or you know if you or a loved one has been diagnosed and, and right. you think people who worked in the mines or in trades or whatever were the ones that get this not this you know girl who shouldn't have it right but that's exactly why I do what I do because um, the fastest growing population of mesothelioma patients now are young women really? and really? and the reason it is caused by asbestos mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people think asbestos is banned in the United States and it is not asbestos is still being used that's crazy it's, I know I know it's it's a completely carcinogenic material but it's still not banned. We're working on getting a ban in place, mm -hmm. but even then, it's still present in schools and public buildings, and so trying to get rid of it is a whole nother issue. Um, but so that's why I do what I do. I was diagnosed when I was only 36 years old, mm -hmm. and if that wasn't bad enough, it was only three and a half months after the birth of my only baby. Oh, wow. So my daughter was three and a half months old. I'm just getting into being a mom and figuring things out because that's about when things kind of get into a rhythm. Right. You know, it's like, oh, she's three months old. She's kind of got her days and nights back to normal. And, and then, but I just felt so horrible. I was so sick. I was tired all the time. I was losing weight like five to seven pounds a week. Wow. You know, I thought, wow, this pregnancy thing agrees with losing all this weight. No work, whatever. Breastfeeding's awesome. But... <laughs> You know, it's like there was there was definitely an insidious underlying reason, and it was because I was growing a tumor, mm -hmm. and the tumor was was um, so. What do they say? It's it's I can't even remember what they call it, but it just it sucks the life from me literally. Yeah. So I was incredibly anemic. I was losing all this weight, and I got my diagnosis on November twenty first, two thousand five. And it was malignant pleural mesothelioma. And my doctor said, if you don't do anything, he goes, you'd probably be dead in 15 months. Wow. So here I've got this newborn baby. They're telling me I could die in 15 months. And, you know, it's like, I, that's not an option. What else can I do? It's like, there's got to be something I can do. He's like, well, you can go to Boston and see this doctor. Um, and he can do this surgery on you. So I actually flew to Boston. Mm -hmm. And on February 2nd, 2006, I had my left lung removed. So I live life with one lung. Wow. Wow. So I had my, yeah, the left lung, the left half of my diaph diaphragm, ribs, the lining of my heart, all of that is gone. So I have nothing left in the left half of my chest. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been living the last 10 years with one lung. And we actually celebrate the day. We call it Lung Leaving Day. So we've turned something that could be a tragedy into something positive. Right. And that's what I love about your message is you're like, no matter what, you can triumph over something no matter, because I love your message, no matter what your age, you can do it. And yeah. that's what I thought about this too. It's like, even though this was something horrible, we turned it into something positive. And now we celebrate with 100, 120 of our closest friends every year. Oh my gosh, that's so fabulous. Yeah. And the, the, 
a theme around the day is we take a plate and we write our fears on a plate. Mm -hmm. And we smash our fears and our plate into a bonfire in our backyard. I live in Minnesota, and this is in February. <laughs> Burr. So, we're not in sunny Florida. So, you know, it's it's pretty crazy. Everybody's bundled up, and, and, you know, my husband has this huge bonfire in the backyard, and, you know, we got, you know, the hot chocolate peppermint schnapps flowing, and, <laughs> and it's a great celebration of life and conquering your fears, and people look forward to it all year long. So it's really an incredible celebration. I'm sure. Oh, that is such an amazing story, Heather. Wow. Wow. So what, what do you think caused, we know asbestos, but can you pinpoint anything in your life where you were exposed? My dad was not only a fireman, he was a construction worker. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what he did was demolition and drywall work. Mm -hmm. And that was in the late 70s, right. you know, mid to late 70s. And a lot of the uh, drywall that he was working with contained asbestos. Drywall mud, he was a sander, right. and he cleaned up after all that. You know how dusty it is after drywall. Sure. And he would come home with this coat, and this coat was positively crusty and gray. Mm. And I would wear this coat, because it was Dad's coat, mm -hmm. to go out and do my chores in the yard. Mm -hmm. You know, like if I had to feed my rabbits or rake the leaves or whatever, or, you know, even just to go get the mail, I would throw my Dad's coat on. Right, right, it was right. always hanging on the doorknob in the utility room where we came and went every day. Right. And so we pinpoint it was from my dad, unfortunately. Wow. And um, so a lot of exposures my age, that's what it is, is mm -hmm. second hand exposure through a parent's work. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So true. And like you said, you you know, you associate it with those commercials that you said right. you see on late night TV and you don't expect someone like yourself to come yeah. down with it. Now you said that I I'm just my mind is blown that they're still using asbestos in the schools, how do we protect our children? What can we do as parents? You know, the main thing is to keep informed. You know, if your school was built before 1980, which most of them are, yeah. and if they haven't done abatement, there's probably asbestos somewhere in the school. A lot of schools have done abatement in them. Mm -hmm. There was a program a few years ago and, and they came through and, and did a lot, but there are a lot of schools that still have it in there. And it's mm -hmm. just being informed Knowing what's going on in their school, when there is construction going on in the school, is the school taking the right precautions mm -hmm. to make sure no kids are being exposed and that if there is asbestos, that it's not becoming friable, which means airborne. Mm -hmm. um, asbestos is fine as long as it's intact. Mm -hmm. It's when it's disturbed right. and those fibers get you know, flown into the air, that's when it's dangerous. But isn't there yeah. something that they could just simply use instead of? Oh, there's there's so many new products out there that they could, but asbestos is cheap. cheap. We still import it. You know, we mm -hmm. import it from Brazil and Russia, and we don't mine it anymore in the United States. Mm -hmm. We finally shut down their mine. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we still import it. I, I've heard that they use it, like, in fracking and that sort of thing, because it's quite yes. the properties are indisputable right. but there's ceramics that they can use and there's there's many other products mm -hmm. and synthetics that they can right. use now. so yeah. there's no excuse yeah to it also it. comes down to, to money absolutely to money to saving oh. saving saving the cost yep. Yep. so um i know the awareness day is coming up what day is that and how can we help what can we do well september 26th and, you know, we said in the past, if you could dedicate your, like, Twitter feed, just a post to, you know, mesothelium awareness, I'm dedicating mm -hmm. my post to mesothelium awareness day, mm -hmm. which is September 26th. It's a Monday this year. Okay. It's coming up um, soon. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. coming up soon. I'm actually going to St. Louis, a suburb of St. Louis called Alton, Illinois, and doing a fun run mm -hmm. um, with Miles, Miles for Miso is what it's called. Yeah. And so my whole family is going to that. And so I'm not doing the 5K. I'm doing the 3K because I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> but running is not the easiest with one lung. But, I could you know, imagine, yeah. yeah so we, but we go and we participate and we have a lot of fun. And on Monday morning, if you watch the Today Show, mm -hmm. a bunch of my friends from the Mesothelioma Applied Research Foundation, um, which is a nonprofit dedicated to mesothelioma awareness, will be on the Today Show out in the plaza. Oh, awesome. So, you know, and we just, you know, we always say wear blue for mesothelioma awareness okay. day because that's the color of mesothelioma. 
and um, you know, just talk to people about it. Ask me about it. Find me on Facebook or Twitter, and and I'm happy to help out and you know help spread the word. So all right, so so tell us on Facebook and where can we find you so people can reach out to you? Oh, I'm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> just Google her. No. Yeah. You can find me on Facebook, Heather Von St. James, um, V-O-N-S-T period J-A-M-E-S. Uh, Twitter, Heather V-S-J. Mm -hmm. Instagram, Heather V-S-J. Um, Google Plus, Heather Von, I think V-S-J there as well. Okay. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm on Facebook. I'm on all the, you can Google me, find right. my blog. Right. right. My blog is at mesothelioma.com. Okay. So, um, you know, my blog is there and, and everything that I've written in the last five years is there. And I know you're going to be sharing a blog post on my website with my followers. So yeah. everyone make sure to look for it, read it, and share it. That will be coming up in the next, well, week. Yeah, great. And, um, all right, so there's some other, where are some other websites where people can go to learn Well, mesothelioma.com is, is the, um, where I blog through, and that is okay. a great resource for information and community. Um, CureMiso.org, C-U-R-E-M-E-S-O.org, okay. is the Mesothelioma Applied Research Foundation, mm -hmm. which is a nonprofit, and they do patient support and that sort of thing, and it's a great nonprofit that I volunteer for and raise money for. Okay. And also AsbestosDiseaseAwareness.com, mm -hmm. which is ADAO.us, I think is her website, or AsbestosDiseaseAwareness.org. I can't remember, okay. uh, but that's okay. another nonprofit. And we, um, my friend Linda Reinstein is the CEO of that. And she does a lot of law, um, Washington DC stuff to mm -hmm. try and get asbestos banned. Okay. So one is more about the patient and mesothelioma and ADAO is more about asbestos, the laws, the litigation and, um, making sure asbestos gets banned and, and awareness as to where asbestos is. Yeah. All about it where you can find it how we can get a band and that sort of thing so okay. awesome that's so so important is there a hashtag that we can share on September 26 uh, cure me so okay. me so and hashtag end me so end me so okay awesome. so those, those work great so yeah all right great well Heather I'm so happy that you are healthy and that you're educating and making making people aware of this very important issue and thank you so much for joining us today and i want everyone who's watching and listening to please visit heather learn more educate yourself so you in turn can educate the people who you love around you do you have That's any great. last word you want to tell everyone? Well, I just want to say thank you for having me and thank you for helping me spread awareness because it's so important. You know, people who are involved in the disease know about it, but until I was sick, I had no idea. Sure. And bringing awareness is the first step to finding a cure. Until people know what it is and then pe until people understand what it is, a right. cure is not going to happen. Right. So thank you for being kind of in on the grassroots level of spreading awareness because it's so important that people know about asbestos and mesothelioma and the dangers. So it's great to uh, be a part of this and, and thank you so much. It's it's awesome. I, um, I'm so grateful. My pleasure. Anything that I can, you know, anything else I can do, please let me know. But we're going to get this, this out on iTunes, on the website, and we're just going to let's Yay. blow up the internet and educate everyone. Great. All right, Heather, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. And good luck on your run. Thanks so much. I just want to finish. We want to see photos. <laughs> I will be posting many updates. I might even Facebook Live it from uh, oh, the event. That would be so, awesome. If I can talk and walk at the same time. <laughs> oh, all right. Thank you so much, everyone. And please visit Heather's website. Support her on Mesothelioma Day. I have a hard time saying that word for some yeah, reason. Yeah, we joke. It's like you can't pronounce it, can't say it. What is Mesothelioma? it? Mesothelioma? Mesothelioma. Miso. Yep. Like miso soup. Yes, exactly. Okay. That's how we shorten it, miso. It. Miso. All right, Heather, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye.